Hi guys, this is a video from Crypto Data. Today we're starting a new video series, slightly different from our usual content. But before getting into it, let's clear up some basics. Nowadays, we're living in a digital era in which everything is heading towards work simplification through automatization. Therefore, this technology development and any succeeding upgrade is designed to keep up with people's needs and the society's evolution. The most important attribute of this development is speed. Everything in the world moves faster. Cars are getting faster, communication channels enable a much easier and real-time information sharing. And even food has to be cultivated and prepared faster. Why? Because as the population is facing rapid growth, consequently our needs change. The fundamental requirements imposed by these modern times are connectivity, mobility, energy and sustainability. What does this imply? A variety of portable devices that feature long battery life in order to perform calculations and forecast outcomes for you and to keep you connected with anyone from anywhere at any time. A complete device should meet the user's following requirements. To incorporate all computer's functions in a portable device, to enable seamless communication, to provide as much storage space as possible, to keep you entertained through a variety of functions such as taking and sharing photos, reading books, listening to music, watching movies and playing games, and this is just to name a few of them. Smartphones and laptops represent such devices that can perform the aforementioned functions by using all kinds of applications developed by different companies or independent developers. So far so good, since there is diversity within the established community. Do users really know how these apps are developed, who owns them and how secure they are? This is in fact the real problem. Let's put it this way. Imagine right now you're in a remote area and extremely thirsty. And instead of looking for fresh water, you choose to drink whatever water most of the people are drinking, regardless of the fact that you don't know where that water came from. It could be from a puddle, a recycling pond, or preferably from a clear spring. Well, I hate to break it to you, but most of the times it's never from a clear spring. You see? This is the big problem with these apps. People keep choosing them and using them just because of their good marketing. I could list and explain to you all the security shortcomings of these companies and apps that claim to be encrypted by using E2E, not to mention those who don't even bother to use this feature at all. What's really important is the users to become aware that their sensitive data is accessed, retrieved and used both by the companies in question and the hackers as well. This represents a serious matter because their security and integrity are compromised. Remember that I've mentioned in my last video, the user is both the customer and the product. To start with, I will cover the general characteristics on how these apps are actually developed and only after we'll analyze them one by one. As this is how you'll better understand these problems and why and how it's difficult to fix them. The first things to ask yourself when you want to develop and market a product are why do we create the product? And what needs or wishes do we fulfill by creating this product? At this point, you're not yet concerned about how it will look like in its final form. Everything starts when analyzing those databases. Yep, those that users worldwide consider them to be harmless. How will this product be created? What is purpose? Following which pattern do we develop it? How do we start it? What human resource do we need? How much time does the developing process take? What is required? And so on. The answer to those questions can be found as well in the previously mentioned databases. Only when we reach the third stage, we need to decide what the product is going to be. Would it be a device, a service, or maybe an app? Well, the reason apps are launched in such large numbers is because they don't require high development costs and you don't come across import and supplying issues or other different taxes like a physical product. Simply put, in terms of production, you don't face that kind of bumps, especially because most people don't know how to code. And finally, who did we make this app for? The naked truth? Well, it's obvious. It's made with the purpose of making money by having people using it. New apps are released this frequently because they're easy to develop, accessible from any device, can be downloaded for free and target many users as the users represent both the customer and the product. Now, with all this information, I hope it's more clear for you how this industry works so that you have a good basis to drive into this series. In the next episode, I will give you 
insights and explanations about the privacy shortcomings of the existing apps and we'll talk also about security and why it's so hard for it to be preserved and strengthened. That's it for today. Hope you found it useful and let me know in your comments below what is your thoughts on this. See you next time and don't forget to stay safe. Thanks for watching. Yeah.